Travis Wayne Goodso. So in case you didn't know, the Exodus story is the most important story in all religion. Even for Christians. They just call it Passion Week. And have a different name for the character of the story. They call him Jesus. For the Jews, it's Passover. And their character is Moses. <clears throat> and so despite the culture and despite the language, the story goes all the way back to the beginning with the Egyptians. It is the most important story of all religious organizations, all belief systems, upon which all governments derive their origin from. And so you'd think that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is in line with this as well. So for example, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So a man like Moses will be raised up. Joseph Smith in verse 40 he is told by Nephi and if you're not in the know it's Nephi not Moroni he is, Joseph Smith is told he quoted also the third chapter of Acts 22nd and 23rd verses precisely as they stand in our New Testament. He said that that prophet was Christ. A man like Moses is the Christ, huh? Well, that's the learning of the Jews. But it doesn't quote it. So we have to go to Acts. And there's the connection to Deuteronomy 18. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. So Joseph Smith knows about him. In Jeremiah, chapter 23, there's an example of the learning of the Jews concerning this future man like Moses, whom the Jews are waiting for. Verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name by which he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's Moses. That's the Exodus. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them. And they shall dwell in their own land. That's the last day's gathering. Just like Moses, there will be the fall of the great and abominable church of Pharaoh of Egypt, types and shadows, an exodus, and an entrance into Zion, the promised land. This is the most important, pivotal scripture in all of humanity, of all of the world. Do you understand a little better of why this is important? 
So Joseph Smith, he knew of this, and guess what? Section 103, talking about the redemption of Zion, in verse 16, Therefore I will raise up unto my people a man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel. He's Mormon? They never taught us this doctrine. What's up with that? <clears throat> well, there's more shocking stuff for you. What keys does the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints hold? Oh, just Peter's keys, huh? Well, the true president of the true Church of the Lamb is supposed to hold the keys of section 107 verse 91. And again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. To be a seer, revelator, translator, and prophet. Well, is there any other keys that are involved with Moses? Let's go to the Kirtland Temple. Am I getting the right one? No, it's 110. I'm doing the prophecy for the name of the Millennial Church. 110. So you have uh, some people visiting, uh, saw the Lord, learning of the Jews, right? So it's a man like Moses, and then Moses, verse 11, huh, Moses appears, huh? What keys did he give? Keys of the gathering of Israel from the four parts of the earth, and the leading of the ten tribes from the land of the north. The Exodus keys for the presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But that's not the name of Joseph's church. Hmm. Huh. And then Elias, which most people make the mistake of assuming that's the Greek name of Elijah, and you would be right, but it says he has the keys of the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham. And so you need to go to the book of Abraham and see that that is actually Elishua, the God of salvation. And then Elijah, for the day that shall burn as an oven. And so, uh... With all of this very blatant doctrine all throughout Scripture, because even the, the uh, Jesus character uh, is, is uh, patterned after Moses, as other you know, Greek stories, Roman stories, uh, even Babylonian, South American, ancient, Aztec, Mayan stories, everybody has it. You'd think that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, claiming to be successors of Joseph Smith, claiming to be a restoration of the original religion, claiming to be the fullness of truth, fullness of the gospel, fullness of scripture, that, as it's the Old Testament this year for Sunday school and seminary, they've harmonized them now. And so for institute, you'll have the courses at BYU and the BYUs. <coughs> right? And so 
when is that lesson on the Exodus? Did we already have it? Is it going to be the week after conference? Wait a minute, what? The Exodus story, which is the most important story of all the human race, is on conference weekend. So that it doesn't get taught to Mormons. You have to independently do it yourself. How many Mormons are likely to do that? They are skipping the most important story of all scripture that Joseph Smith himself constantly refers to. That the Book of Mormon constantly refers to. The keystone of our religion. And that one lesson is skipped. See, they didn't say conference weekend and then have it the next week. Nope. Conference weekend, the Exodus. And then the week after is the other story uh, after the little wilderness wandering. And the Ten Commandments. And then Easter. You skip Passover, having it on the same weekend as conference, and you throw in an extra lesson not related at all to the Old Testament. It's a different religion. And it's technically pagan, <laughs> with the Easter bunny and eggs and trees. church purposely designed it that way. I was in that committee. I know how things work. We get orders from the presidency. And they have to implement it. They specifically designed it to have the crucial pivotal story of all stories during conference. So that it would pass over Mormons. What more do you need, guys? Joseph Smith gave a talk on 19 July, 1840. And in that talk, which did not get published in the Doctrine and Covenants, and this is why, because Joseph Smith calls out Brigham Young and his 12 apostles with only the keys of Peter, Judas. He refers to the Last Supper. Is it I? Is it I? He prophesies that they will murder him. And so lo and behold, Willard Richards and John Taylor of the Twelve were the only ones in the room after Joseph Smith chased out the mob. Which church do you belong to? I enjoy Joseph. I choose Joseph. Which do you choose, Mormons? <laughs>